We're here to answer your game, game, your game night questions, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight's question comes from Emmett O'Brien, who clicked on Ask the Bellhop over at tabletopbellhop.com to say, Hey, have you done an episode on Session Zero? Maybe how to establish a starting agreement for board game groups. Maybe different sized groups. A lot of people are put off by formal agreements. Maybe how to set expectations in a conversation. Well, hey, Emmett. Uh, long time no here. Uh, thanks for the great question. And while we have mentioned Session Zero uh, many times and how important it is many times, we have not actually done an episode on it yet. And I've got to say, it's probably been a long time coming. So here we are. All right. So I guess we should start by defining what Session Zero is for listeners. All right. So usually when you hear the term Session Zero, it's in the context of pen and paper role playing games, where traditionally it meant the first session. Before you start to play the game, you all gather together and everyone makes characters and the DM works on maps and you do world building or whatever it is you need to do to start playing the game. It was always generally pretty mechanical in what you were looking at. It was the stuff that's required to play the game, nothing outside of that. Right. And I think really it's that pregame prep more than character gen that has really come to the forefront of discussions on session zero. Yeah. It's safety tools, scheduling, general agreements, and understandings about what will be happening. Right. Like over the years, this initial session has evolved to be so much more than just a character generation session and making sure your party talks about how they got together or something like that. Nowadays, a good session zero should be about a lot more than making characters and should actually start before even the game you're going to play has been chosen. Now, the thing is, this is all in role playing context up to this point. There's no reason this concept, this idea of getting your group together before the game night should be limited to just role playing games. It can be just as important to have a session zero with any group sitting down to play games together. And honestly, this is something that can and probably should be extended to any social gathering. But tonight, we're going to focus on board game groups. Okay, so let's get into this. Why the heck should I have a session zero? All right, so the main thing is the whole point of people getting together to play games together is to have fun, to have an enjoyable experience together. You want people to show up, have a good time, go home, and even better, talk about that session years for come. Remember that night when this happened, that game night. What you don't want is disappointment, boredom, miscommunication, or at worst, someone getting hurt. Well, how do we do that? <laughs> okay, so the big thing Session Zero is about is setting expectations. This is a huge thing. You will hear us talk about expectations and getting buy-in on almost every episode of our podcast where we're not just recommending a bunch of games to play. Pretty much every topic we talk about for improving your game night starts with communication and expectations and meeting those. We want to make sure everyone is on the same page. You want to make sure everyone knows what's coming. There are no surprises and you know how to deal with any potential problems before they come up. You don't want to be inviting the hardcore Twilight Imperium gamer who doesn't play anything less than a 4.0 to your game of party game you know fluffy party game night <laughs> it's yeah, just exactly you, know, you need to everyone needs to expect the right thing at that game night yeah what your first steps like i'm gonna start like i'm focusing on this as in one game group not a public play event i'll get to that we'll talk to that about that but i'm talking about like you're just trying to get a game group together that wednesday nights we're gonna play at joe's house and 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 get together every wednesday or every third wednesday or perhaps you're gonna meet at the local tim horton's uh, the first Monday of every month, or you're going to go down to the Legion for card game night and try to introduce some new games to the group. Like, nah, that's getting more into public play. <laughs> you're going to go play at the Legion with your group at one of the big tables and have some cheap beer and get some Legion food, whatever, whatever it is you happen to be doing. I'm, I'm talking about a small knit group of people getting together at this point. Personal, and, personal party groups. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're a game group, not a game club, not a game event, not a game party. A, a, your personal game group. For, this is tips for personal game groups. So the first step is to find out why is everyone here? Because it might not be what you expect. What is everyone expecting out of the experience? 
Now, I'm not saying you sit down with a pen and paper and everyone writes an essay on why they're there, but just like, so we're going to get together and play games. Why are you coming over? Why do you want to play games? Some people, the reasons might be, I just want to hang out. Like, I enjoy spending my time with you folk. I want to hang out. I'm going to have a few beers. We're going to relax and we're going to play some games. But then the person next to him is like, whoa, wait, wait, beers? We didn't talk about beers. You're going to come over and we're just going to, if we're just going to have beers, I'd rather sit and watch Netflix or make fun of TNA wrestling on TV or something. I don't want to do that while I'm playing my games. And that's the conversation you want to have, the back and forth. You want to find out why people are there. What do they want out of the experience? Are they there to play games? Are they there to challenge themselves? Are they there to burn their brains? Are they there to try new games they've never played before and have experiences? Are they there to have a, a big event night where they have some good food and they try new games and it's a whole Epicurean thing? Or is it just someone who's like, you know what, I'm bored. I just want to show up and play some games. And then maybe someone else like, you know, I just want to play games I already know. And I want to relax, sit back and forget about work for a few hours. And now we're talking about, uh, in this case, most mostly been talking about, you know, groups of friends who get together. Yes. This can also work for your family game mm -hmm. night. If you're having a family yes. game night, your kids are probably more involved than just mom and dad told us we had to play games on Thursday mm -hmm. night. They I would will hope so. still, yeah, they will still have, even if, even if they are told Thursday night is game night, don't schedule anything. They will still have ideas about what they want to get out of it. You mm -hmm. know, maybe why they're there is because mom and dad told them to, but why, what they're going to get out of that, they may have ideas. Maybe your daughter only wants to play card games. You know, maybe she loves magic. Uh, maybe your son only wants to play the Duke, uh, you know, and, and you need to uh, sort of accommodate and understand why everyone's mm -hmm. there, even if it's family. Um, not everyone's going to want the Monopoly night every Thursday. And listen to our episodes on playing games with kids to learn why you shouldn't force your kids to join you for game night in the first place. It oh, should yes. always be their choice. You should invite them to join you. If they want to play every Wednesday, you should. You should have a session zero with your family. So the other thing that why we want to do this, why do we want to have this is you want to know why everyone, what everyone wants out of it. And you want to cater the game night to that experience because the entire point is for people to have fun. The other thing that comes up when we talk about this and now we are not experts on this particular category, but is safety. And by safety, yes, I do mean getting paper cuts on the board game and don't uh, don't play the giant wooden Jenga necessarily. But I'm talking about safety tools, not all games, board games included. Um can be harmful. You, They might bring up topics that are uncomfortable. They might um, bring up uh, racism. They might bring up nasty words. They could bring up uh, the fantasy trope of rape is extremely common, both in board games and role-playing games. These are the kind of things that honestly can be perfectly fine with your group, but you need to talk about it. You need to discuss safety to find out, are there any boundaries? Now, in role-playing games, we call it lines and veils. Uh, a line is a part in the game you never cross, and a veil is something that we do off screen. Well, veils are probably not going to come up during most board games, but lines definitely are. And, and if you're playing admit, escape games, some yes. of these lines and veils may actually be more important than uh, than other things because you uh, escape games, horror and horror games in horror particular. Games, yes, um, there there can be things that you know may have maybe maybe more upfront than you would like. Yes. Now, again, there's lots of topics out there on safety tools and tools you can use. And I, I, that, that is not our topic tonight is safety tools for board games might be another one. But trust me, there's no reason not to have an X card on a table when we're board game night. I was once playing a game of Nitwit, which is a game where you were trying to link different words together and kind of, well, this kind of fits with our review later, <laughs> kind of like a Venn diagram, but it's like loops of thread and different words getting tied together. And we sat down and there was a combination of three words that made every person at the table think the same thing. And it was very obvious we were all thinking that. And I literally said, okay, we're going to stop right now. How blue do you want this game to go? Are we going to allow swear words and sexual positions and body parts and things like that in this game? And that's all you do is you stop and you ask. Well, the three players who were playing the game was like, yep, we're good with it. And then we read off our clues and we were perfectly, well, we checked there were no kids around, <laughs> read off our clues and got a bunch of points for making some obvious connections. Another thing that people don't necessarily think about, because in an RPG, it's probably not going to come up, is um, levels of learning ability uh, and, mm -hmm. and skills. 
Uh, if you're all sitting down to an RPG, odds are pretty good. You're all, you know, a similar education background, uh, and you're probably all going to be able to read to a certain degree. Uh, whereas if you're all sitting down to a board game, there may be different levels of both language skills mm. and reading ability. Uh, and knowing that up front, you can avoid the games that are reading heavy or, yeah. you know, lean towards them or, you know, focus on games that are all icons and don't need to do. And that's one of those things where it is a purely comfort level. And I consider it a safety issue for your players. You do not want to be f having your players feel bad because everyone mm -hmm. else is having a great time, but they're struggling to read the clues or the cards or yep. the board. Here's a good one that just came up in the chat. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Maybe we'll go through it in the lobby. But they mentioned, someone in the chat, Darkling Blight, mentioned that there is a person who shows up their gameplay who has a problem with swearing. Swearing at the table. There is something I would have never considered. I play with Deanna. They're swearing at our game table. They're swearing at our game table if we play with the kids. But you know what? I never really said, hey, Tori Cat, are you guys okay with the amount of swearing Deanna has here? Actually, I think Dee did say once. She's like, if you want me to tone it down, I can. Uh, we did say the opposite. We said, no, don't worry about watching your mouth around our kids because it's not something we were concerned about with them growing up. I didn't think we were going to ruin their small minds by some nasty words. But that's a good example of something you probably don't even realize that someone could take offense to or have a problem with. Absolutely. There are certain religions out there that have different feelings on things. And you may have no idea that this mm. friend of yours is a member of that religion because they're just a cool friend who you've known yep. for years. But it turns out, oh, they, you know, can't have charcuterie on, on Fridays because they don't eat meat and they are offended by swearing. Yeah. Good things to know if you're about to set up a regular Friday night game night. Now, here's a real life experience playing a game of Descent Journeys in the Dark. I can't remember what edition it was. Played through first three scenarios, say, perfectly fine. All of a sudden, in the fourth scenario, the giant spider miniature comes out, and one of the gamers leaves. Gets up, leaves the table, grabs their keys, goes home. Com severe arachnophobia. If we talked about that ahead of time, now this wasn't my group, so I, I should say this was not my group. This is not my experience. I'm reiterating the experience someone else told me about when talking about safety tools and role-playing games with the board game experience. Um, they left. They, they literally left the table. Um, and it was kind of like, well, you know, if we'd known, we could have just easily swapped those for Hellhounds or whatever. whatever swap the mini even. You don't put the mini out and say, this represents a, it's a spider, but you know what? We're going to put this out for that other player's sake. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it is a thing. Uh, it's it's amazing how certain phobias in particular can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, emerge. Uh, <laughs> for instance, the other night, uh, I went to bed and I started reading a new book. Uh, and I changed over to a new chapter. And that chapter was directly referencing a person going through something that represents my phobia. Um, it, they were in a situation I would not deal well with. I had to put the book down. I put my kindle down walked away because i i literally could not at that point in time read that without having an mm -hmm. anxiety attack and and i was just reading a story and there is very little the difference between reading that text off my book yep. or reading the text or having the text read to you in a board game all right one more one more example before we go into actual things to talk about specific more specifically is we are currently playing the ghost betwixt uh, right in the first opening paragraph of that game, a child is kidnapped. That is the premise for the game. That is something before sitting down to play that game, you should okay with your group and say, are you cool with a child being kidnapped and honestly tortured later in the story? So are you okay with that? Okay, it is a horror game. It's about a haunted house, but the cover of the book makes it look like Scooby-Doo. Yeah, haunted house doesn't say child torture to me right <laughs> at all uh sitting down with that box in front of me and i have sat down i've seen the box i've seen the setup i've seen mm -hmm. the bits and pieces um i've even seen the monsters which are comedically designed yes um the the you know you've got a whole bunch of monsters and baddies there and none mm -hmm. of them are serious <laughs> i mean there, right. there's you know evil raccoons are are, are, are on no the, literally uh, raccoons wearing pumpkins yeah jack-o-lanterns and and if you told me that there was going to be child abduction and torture in this game, I yeah. would go, 
whoa, I'm bringing this back to the store, possibly, because possibly, it is so yeah. misrepresented um, in yeah. that particular case. I, I wasn't yeah, aware that there was torture. Game I, I was not aware that there was torture in this game. I knew uh, I knew about the kidnapping because I was there for that. Part. Well, heck, I'll, I'll spoil <laughs> it again. Fair warning about the. It is not descriptive, but there is detained on an altar. Right now, it doesn't go much further than that, but you have cultist child detained on an altar. again a child. Right, if it wasn't a child. Yep. might not have bothered me as much. But anyway, enough about specific games. So what I want to move on to now are things you should cover in a board game session zero. Now, this is not meant to be exhaustive, but it does seem long. Maybe you don't have to talk about all these things. And honestly, I got to say any session zero is better than no session zero, but you should try to do the best you can. Right. If you're not comfortable with bringing up all these topics, maybe it's something you can work into session one or two or three sessions in kind of get into it. So one of the so first these, things. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry. these are in no, nope. no particular order. Yeah. So, I mean, first off, uh, one that a lot of me, some groups may really be able to skip. If you are the group of friends who have been hanging out yeah. together for years, it may be no issue, but who's attending? Um, mm. Is, is Jane bringing her partner? Is Bob bringing his partner? Is, you know, our wives allowed our kids allowed. Yeah. Can you bring um, a guest? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, if, if 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 it's well established that well we're the guys who are playing games and or we're the folk who are playing games and we have been doing something every week for years mm. maybe not an issue but it's still worth at least mentioning you know hey if you're gonna bring somebody else let us know in advance or let's yep. you know we'll have a discussion and then you can quickly skip by this but if you're setting up a new group yeah this is something you probably want to address who's gonna be there who's gonna be there the next, pretty obviously, where's that going to be? And when's it going to be? And yes, we know all the problems of scra scheduling game nights, but make sure everyone's on the same page. Are you going to play at the same place? Is that a Mo's house on Monday nights and it starts at 8.30 every week? Or is it, say, like Jeff Seuss's group where they play at a different house every, whatever, couple sessions, they switch houses? Or is it you're going to meet at the local game store or the local library or wherever it happens to be? And when is it going to happen? This everyone should know, and it should be well communicated, especially if it's not Mo's on Monday. Mo's on Monday is pretty simple. But when it's we're going to play at the CG Realm on this Saturday, and we're going to play at Easy Mode on this Saturday, and then we're going to go all the way out to Leamington the third Saturday of the month just to check out ATOC Gaming and play some cards, that needs to be communicated to everyone. And that's where I actually do say write it down use Facebook, create events, use your Google calendars. There's lots of ways to schedule things, but make sure that is clear. You want this to be one of the most clear things out there. Well, and no, it's not a safety tool, but this is still a session zero topic. And, and to be fair, that one of the big confusing things on when is when people say things like every second Saturday of the month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it every second Saturday of the month? Is it every other Saturday? Is it, you know, be clear as yes. possible. Uh, like things like every second Saturday of the month can really confuse people easily, yes. um, especially, you know, when you get the five week uh, month. I was going to say the, <laughs> the worst one for events I ran is I used to do something special if there was a fifth week. Right. If there's a fifth Saturday <laughs> in the month, we do this special thing, which to me was memorable. And I thought it'd be cool. And it was like one of those things it only happens four times a year. So it's a big deal. Everyone forgot. Yeah. Everyone forgot. Uh, and when it comes to where, uh, make sure that everyone is able to go to a place. Yes. Uh, you know, if you have someone who's working on their 10 year chip chip, don't go play at the bar. Um, <laughs> you know, there's there are there are definitely things, um, you know, places that certain people can't or refuse to or don't want to or shouldn't go. Yes. Uh, so just make sure everyone's aware and clear. This is where we're going. And is that going to be a problem with anybody? Mm -hmm. uh, Transportation is a big part of this, too. And actually, I guess that'd be part of the what? How? How are you going to get there? Is someone going to pick people up? Are people going to carpool? Are you taking a bus? Are you taking a U Uber? Is the person taking the Uber responsible for paying for it? Or is the group willing to split the cost so that you can game with your friend? Um, and one thing I want to stress that I don't know if we really got to here is these are all decisions that should be decided by the entire group. This shouldn't be, well, for role playing games, the game master or whatever, but this shouldn't be like the event organizer or the core host or the, you know, the, the game guru, the the alpha gamer, I hate the term alpha, but you know what I mean? Uh, just because it's Moe's game night at Moe's house and Moe owns all the games doesn't mean Moe gets to make all the decisions. 
Next so, up, yeah, yeah. It is what do you do if some of that doesn't work? So most importantly, I want to talk about the host. And this is something I never even think of. And I got to thank our, our patron, Jeff Seuss, for making me more aware of this, is what happens when the host can't make it? Um, so whoever is the person you're playing at their house, if they aren't free, what happens? What do you do? Have that backup plan in place before it happens for the first time. And more importantly, keep it consistent. Don't switch it. Oh, Mo can't make it this week. What are we doing? Are we going to play? Do you want to get together here? Have a backup plan. Now, this isn't as big a deal with board games. Most of the time, you can just cancel, right? You're not missing out anything. But if you're playing a campaign game and you're trying to get it done in a certain time or you're on some kind of time constraint or you're playing something that's been left set up for a week that you want to return to, that's more of an issue. But when you're just having a normal game night where you're just playing casually, you probably just want to cancel. But again, I've said this before when talking about game nights and events, the more you cancel, the more easy it becomes for people to cancel again. And you almost kind of want to get together with everyone and do something just to keep that time slot. Yeah, no, and there's and there's a lot of different reasons. Sometimes, you know, if you're playing at people's houses, this becomes a bigger issue. The, if the host can't make it, and they, that you probably can't go play at the house. Yeah. But if you're playing at the uh, at the FLGS, there are things that happen there too. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, hey, I just found out Thursday night, there's a big magic release magic party. Magic release They're doing the pre-release party. There's <laughs> no tables there for us. Are we, you know, even, so even if you're playing, even if you're not playing at someone's house, even if you're playing at Tim Hortons, uh, one of my, one of my local Tim Hortons just shut down to do a full reno. Mm-hmm. Um, they left the, you know, you can't go play in the drive through <laughs> which they left open. So where are we going to go? You know, at, even if you're not playing at houses, you still need backup plans. Yes. Um, next is, okay, the host is there. The event can happen. There's nothing getting in the way of playing, but what if people can't make it? Now, again, role-playing games is a whole topic on its own. What do you do with the campaign? Who plays their character? Do you, none of that matters for board games. Again, unless you're playing a campaign game. Now is probably not the week to continue your gloom caving game if someone can't make it, but maybe it's the time where you sit there and you play a, um, what are the, the random dungeons or something like that. And again, cancellations aren't bad. We've said this every time we talk about cancellations. People are adults. They have real lives. Games are meant to be fun, but they're games, they're hobbies, they're pastimes. Other things come first. Family, health, friends can all come before that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't be the uber grognard who's mad at their friends because they canceled on a game. It's a game. Get over it. But know what you're going to do. You have a group of six. What happens if one person cancels? Still get together, right? Play a five-player game. What if two people cancel? Are you going to play four-player games? Why not? What if three people cancel? Do you want to play three-player games? Is your group into that? What if everyone but one other person cancels? That should all be kind of figured out ahead of time. And again, figured out with the group. Maybe it's completely different if your game teacher cancels than if the person who just cares about playing late party games and is mostly there to have fun fun with everyone else cancels. Very fair. So uh, another big important thing is how long is the night going to be? Uh, yeah. You know, I, when you're teenagers and you're staying up all night, doing a break for Taco Bell, coming back, hitting up the, slur- you know, super slurpees and <laughs> gaming until 4 a.m. That's one thing. Mm-hmm. Many people are now gaming as adults, however, and may or may not have children or partners or jobs that impact our schedules significantly. Mm-hmm. So plan a time and stick to it. Uh, and and especially this especially goes for, you know, you've got that one person in uh, who, who can't, who, you know, doesn't have the job right now or, is, right. you know, independently wealthy and just wants to party until 4 a.m. still. But everyone else might have jobs. So make it clear up front and center. Yes. Sorry, I, I get that you want to play all night, but the rest of us can't. We're all going to be leaving at 10 30 p.m and stick to it like if you set a limit stick to it and don't be the mo don't be the guy who's like oh come on we just just one more turn play one more game i'm kind of bad for that but I, everyone knows i don't mean it that much i guess i'd like you to stay but yeah i know you got to work tomorrow so go ahead stick to it um one of the tricks i have for that particular one is i will say we are going to play until at least and that way people can commit the time, but then the hardcore players who want to stick around and play another game still can. Um, again, that depends. My venue, I can do that, right? I, I don't have a job to go to in the morning. I work from home. And, and when I was running events at 
bars in particular, pubs or bars. There were two reasons I did this, but uh, which we'll get to another topic in a minute, is I would call the cutoff at 10. I am hosting this event until 10. There will be games to play until 10. After that, if people want to stick around and keep playing games, that's up to them. But they're no longer at my event. They're just here at a bar playing games. And that allows two things. For one, it puts a firm limit on, hey, 10 o'clock, I'm no longer supervising, which is an insurance issue and other things like that. I am no longer responsible for the players who are playing games. They are just patrons of the bar who happen to be there playing games. And second, it lets those people who show up late and who are hardcore and want to stay till two, whether they're drinking or not, to get in as many games as they can, keep playing without making everyone else stay. No one should feel ob obligated to stay. Right. Absolutely. So uh, another thing is, and this is this plays on a lot of the things we've already talked about, uh, what ages of people, you know, again, yeah. this is, you know, who's attending, what ages are, if we are going to say, hey, yes, absolutely, you can bring friends, you know, everyone, yep. everyone's allowed to bring one person to game night. Well, do you want them bringing the 10 year old to a game night that you're going to be playing, mm -hmm. you know, something, you know, I, I don't know, Gloomhaven, uh, whatever. Uh, or maybe you want to sort of say, I think we're going to keep this 16 and up, you know, we're all adults yeah. here and, and we don't really want to have to tone it down to younger kids levels. So well, we're going to say the cutoff is 16. Yeah. Or again, like we talked about adult games and things, those aren't necessarily bad games. As long as your group's on the same page, you are welcome to play them, and I have no problem with it. You just have to be careful if you're playing in public because your game is going to influence people around you, not just your group. But when you're playing at home, play whatever you want, as long as all the people playing that game are on the same page. And in that case, there are many games you may not want young kids to attend for. Right. Whether they're vulgar games, sexual in nature, whatever it happens to be, that's why you might want to put an age limit. Right. Absolutely. And then the next reason for age limits... Uh, and this sort of goes hand in hand with age limits is alcohol. Are you going to allow alcohol? Do you have yeah. any people who are intolerant of alcohol for any reason, physical or otherwise? Um, there's a lot of reasons alcohol, you know, personally, I rarely drink. Um, yeah. I can drink, but I've also got some medication that I don't like to drink too much on, uh, because of. So while if Mo wants to get absolutely sloshed, I don't mind, but I'm only going to have maybe one. And and again, personal choice. This should be up to you. But again, agreed on by the group. That's the important part here. Dave wants to drink every week is fine as long as everyone else there is fine with dealing with Dave. <laughs> and personally, I enjoy drinking and playing games, but my drinking game nights are very different from my non-drinking game nights. And we plan the nights around those, at least when we know they're coming. We got we got blindsided by one the other day, but. <laughs> In general, as long as we know it's happening, it's like, hey, are we drinking tonight? Okay, I'll make sure there's beers in the fridge and my game selection will change. So there are things. Now, the one thing to watch for with alcohol, of course, is who is going to be responsible if people do have too much. And you're going to have to have a very serious conversation about driving home. If you are the host, not only as a good friend or family member, you should be watching for this. You are also legally responsible for anyone leaving your house. So there are a lot of other considerations once alcohol get involved. And again, we're, I don't want to get into the minutiae here, but make a decision on if it's allowed or not. If casual drinking is allowed or deep drinking, like all of that, hard alcohol. Like if you are going to allow alcohol, there needs to be some more talk. Not just, yep, yeah, yeah, we allow alcohol. Who's bringing it? Who's paying for it? Who, who gets the first round? I mean, all of that's part of it as well. Because when you start doing Jagger shots, you're no longer able to have rational discussions about yes. it at that point. <laughs> it's too yep. late. Exactly. Um, next one I want to talk about is quitting games too early, uh, partway through. Honestly, I hate to say it, and I know people hate it, that you should never quit a game partway through, and I totally disagree. There are many reasons to quit a game partway through, and the most important is if it is a safety concern. If someone is bothered by a game, I don't want to use the buzzwords that everyone hates. So if, if, if something bothers someone in a game, and they want to stop, let them stop. This should be something everyone should be perfectly cool with. This couldn't even be a debate that this is a thing, but unfortunately in many game groups and with many gamers, it is. What they call it in role-playing is the open door policy, and I firmly think it should be in place at every game table. If for any reason you feel uncomfortable playing a game or something bothers you, feel free to get up and leave with no reason given. And yes, it sucks for the other players. Yes, it's frustrating. You don't get to finish your game. 
Yes, the competitive players are going to hate it. But all of that, is it worth hurting someone, causing harm to them, upsetting someone for a game? No, let them get up and leave. And it's also worth noting that depending on the games you play, if that person chooses to leave, the game may not actually end. You may yep. be able to complete the game without that person. But even if you are able to, do you want to? As a group, yep. you need to decide that. Maybe we are playing a game where, okay, well, we just take them out. We don't calculate the score and fine, the game goes on. But as a group, agree on that in advance because you are making choices then at that point that, uh, that can affect uh, yes. that person later on when they come back and, and find out you just went ahead without them and are all chatting about the end of the game that they weren't able to, or for yeah. whatever reason, uh, chose not to partake in. And I, we've talked about playing host before. The host should get involved there. There should be a little bit more going on, but in general, putting partway through should be allowed. Uh, Deanna's saying unless you're playing competitively in a tournament or something, but that should have its own session zero-like framework. I, I still say if it gets to that point, doesn't matter if you're a tournament or not, just get up and leave. Like tournament organizers will have to figure something out. No, if you think this could be a problem, you shouldn't be signing up for tournaments. But again, sometimes things come up you totally don't expect. Absolutely. Safety of the players is more important than who wins the tournament. Absolutely. And which, uh, yep. Go ahead. Which brings us to our next topic. Uh, and that's harassment. Uh, and this can take uh, many forms it can be as simple as when player x gets a couple too many drinks in them they start making suggestive comments that are not acceptable by some of the other players mm -hmm. that's harassment uh or it could be uh, you know you've brought uh everyone again we, we everyone's allowed to bring guests we're all welcome all of a sudden somebody starts making unwelcome comments towards one of the guests or the guest starts making unwelcome comments towards somebody else how do we deal with that and harassment not, policies not just that kind of harassment either no, no. people start casually throwing around uh racial slurs or or homophobic words get start getting tossed out in the middle of the game um I, every time i say it i think of xbox live chat right like mm -hmm. if your your game group starts going there it can bother people well it you should bother people but well, does it <laughs> yeah, true. understandably understandably there will there are it will bother it some people more than others I would uh, say. but yes no absolutely uh any um isms essentially yes. uh you know maybe you've got your atheist friend who won't shut up i tend to be one of those people but <laughs> if you also have your religious friend who you equally enjoy playing games with find a way to make those people <laughs> agree yeah. that there isn't going you you know, regardless of your beliefs, allow everyone else beliefs at the tables to go on so long as they're not hurting anybody. Now, basically here, you probably don't need a documented thing for your group, for if it's a group of friends or family. You should just at least talk about it with your group. Again, this is session zero. So you got six of you sitting around. We're talking about playing games. We've decided what games we're going to play, when we're going to play, all this other stuff, how long. And then we go, okay, what do we do if someone does have a problem? So you get asked, what do we do if someone has a problem? Well, what if Sean lets slip something that bothers you, Dave? What do you do? And in some groups, I ask going to be, hey, if I say something inappropriate, call me out, please. Like, you know what? I was raised in a society that taught me to think and talk in certain ways. And I've now learned they're not acceptable, but sometimes it slips through. So please call me out. Another group might be like, you know what? Don't bring it up during the game. Like, just maybe give me a shush, a little symbol, and we'll talk about it after. Or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Again, these are things to talk about. There's no necessarily you need hard and fast rules. Now, if you are going to host a public play event, you need hard and fast rules. But that's something different. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that we can do is uh, to, to help avoid this or at least help deal with things when they happen are safety tools. Yeah. Now, there's all kinds of these. Again, I mentioned earlier, I don't want to get into details, but there is no reason not to have an X card on your board game table. Uh, especially if you're playing with strangers. Like if you're allowing guests in or if you're playing in public or if your game group changes up a lot of weeks, they're very useful to have. There are other ones out there besides the X card, just the X card is probably the most well-known and easiest to explain. Um, you might want something there, especially if you expect there to be problems. If your group plays a lot of horror games, if you're expecting like you're going to have a Cthulhu weekend 
maybe if you don't use safety tools every weekend, you might want to pull them out for that. Or if you're going to play Swords and Sandals Conan the board game, I'll admit I haven't played my copy, but knowing some of the content in Swords and Sandals, I know it can go places that are uncomfortable for some people. Now, that might be a description, but you say, hey, you know what? This particular game might go around the wrong way. Let's put this in place this week. They don't have to be there all the time, though. I still say open door should be there all the time. That's my personal belief. And, uh, you know, I'm going to I hate doing it, but uh, I'm going to call out Cards Against Humanity. Uh, again, we don't necessarily like the game, but a lot of people do. And if you want to yep. play that at your, at your house, uh, again, not in public. Please don't play Cards of Humanity at public events. No, but if you never. want to play that at home, absolutely. and your whole group agrees, and, and you're all on the same page, you've gotten to this, you've gotten this far down the, the yes. list, and everyone is still on board with playing Cards Against Humanity. Have an X card because it can go places that will make people uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I have I have been in situations where not Cards Against Humanity, but similar games have been played with in laws the mm -hmm. table and wow can things get really awkward really fast yeah uh, my standard house rule for cards against humanity not that i ever play it is anyone's free to throw out any card at any time and draw a new one that was a house rule from one of my friends that i actually totally agree with the last time i played it they're like if anything makes you uncomfortable you see it the problem is that doesn't help when someone else plays a card but at least gives you some control over the right. cards um I, I don't think we need to really talk about that separately, so I'm going to skip that and finish off with a little something a little bit more positive in a way is competitiveness. This you're, has come up a number of times. <laughs> you're here to play games. A lot of the questions I get are based on this. A lot of the questions that come in are asked the bellhop. What do I do with overly competitive players? How do I keep overly competitive players happy? Um, what, do, what, what? There's lots around this. And I hate saying competition is bad. It's not. And co competitiveness isn't bad. And I try to win every game I play. That doesn't change. But I think any game group would probably come to the agreement that they're there to have fun, more importantly than they're there to win. That may not be true of every group. Maybe be. your social contract is completely different than mine, where you're talking about this. You're like, we are going to play from these hours to these hours, unless there's a game in progress. And then we will play for 20 minutes more until the timer goes off. We are only going to play four player games. All four player games will only actually run if all four players are present. When we're playing the game, you will not go to the washroom. You will not eat. You will take or you will not do any of this unless it is the player to your left's turn and you have enough time to take a break before getting back. You can play in a group with that. And that is totally valid. I personally don't think I'd have much fun with that, <laughs> but that can be your group. Right. There if are that's people what there. you're into. There are absolutely people out there who want that level of strict eyes on the table competitiveness we are here to play games let's play more power right? to them but you're best not to mix those people with with non casual yes. gamers uh because again i i and, and this is this is something that comes up uh from time to time whereas there are times uh, at fl at the flgs when mo is going to play a certain game and i'm probably going to go sit at another table because mo is going to be more competitive than i am yeah. Uh, I, I generally, as a board gamer, am a play to have fun. I could not care less about winning. Uh, and it's not like I'm, I'm not thinking about winning. It's not like I'm not. It's not like you're not trying. Not trying. But if I don't win, I could not care less. And if I have seen some horrible mistake I've made, I don't care. I really don't. I'm just there to, you know, hang out with mm -hmm. friends. Uh, and I am much more the casual gamer, despite the fact that I do like some heavy games that can get yeah. pretty competitive. Um, even with those, uh, you know, a lot of the times, especially because I don't play games as much as some people, it's much easier for me to go, well, you know, I mean, I'll probably never see this game again. So let's just have some fun with it. Now, on the opposite end of competitiveness is you also want to find out if you have a player who doesn't care. Sean tries to win, but I know people in the local gaming community that once they're at a table playing a game with you are a force of chaos. They have no interest in playing the game to win playing it competitively, or even trying to play it correctly. They are going to do whatever the heck they can to make fun for themselves by causing havoc with everyone else. I personally do not usually enjoy playing with these players. I will play with them at a local game store when I know who I'm sitting down with and I know what kind of game it is, and I'll play the same way. I will sit there and just 
explore. Like that's when I'll play whatever game that they want to play. And I try a new strategy, do something else knowing that they're there. And yes, it sounds fun being the chaotic neutral character in the role playing game, just like being the chaotic neutral player at a board game table. Honestly, I'm sorry to say it's probably more fun for you than anyone else at the table. One of the times you'll see this come out is, you know, the person who thinks Catan is super overrated. So if someone plays Catan, they'll, they have, they don't hate the game, but they'll sit down and, you know, oh, I can do this and this and this and this with the thief and we can do this and we can block every time and, and just, you know, again, ruin the game for the other people because they choose not to like the game. Yeah. Uh, and that's not okay. Again, affecting other people yes. is the problem. And again, the group, uh, you're going to talk about this. If you have a player like that, Okay, so this is going to, I'm going to jump to another topic that wasn't in our show notes here. But know what you might find when you have a session zero? Your group doesn't work. That happens. That's okay. Don't believe the geek social fallacies. Just because you grew up hanging out with Sean and Huge and Dave doesn't mean you have to role play with them or play with them every Monday. Yes, it kind of sucks, but find something else to do. Obviously, gaming wasn't meant for this group because you all want different things out of it and they're competitive, they're, they're, they're conflicting. That's the word I was looking at. They're conflicting. You may find that you can't come to an agreement. Now, I will say most adults should probably be able to come to some kind of compromise where you can be like, you know what? Why don't we do it where we'll switch houses and when we're at Dave's house, we play party games and silly games and Joe can go crazy and do his silly stuff. But when we're at Sean's house, we're going to play serious games and try to take things more seriously and heck let's put some money on the line to make it more interesting and then when we play at mo's house we're gonna sit there and all we're gonna play is social deduction games over and over and over and lie to each other all night and know that there's no hard feelings at the end of the night because it's all a game maybe you come up with something like that but it is possible you find out through doing this exercise that maybe your group is not the right group for you absolutely and it it's this can be tough because sometimes it's just one player and it could be you know you know again uh mo and i you know i've been together i've been hung, hanging out off and on for 40 years mm-hmm. um you know maybe i'm the player who doesn't want to do what they want to do on game night um that's hard no one's saying yeah. it isn't but mm-hmm. it is if it's best for the group to say no you know what sean you and i can play games on saturday afternoon uh friday night i just don't think it's the right game group for you let's uh yeah it's just not gonna happen okay you know i'm an adult (laughs) i'm I'm gonna play games you know i'll go find another group that has those games or i'll go play at the local flgs or the library or whatever Uh, i am an adult and can take that um but that doesn't make it easier it just means that adults should be able to do that yes you should be able to have that conversation which I gotta admit, that's the one that scares most people away, right? People don't like confrontation. I don't know. Think of it as a game. The the goal is to have the perfect game night and with the perfect group who's all on the same page. It's all gonna sit down and have fun together every week. If you can't get there, you gotta figure something out, right? Rebuild your engine, change your strategy, whatever that happens to be. There you go. All right. Since we're talking about board game events, everything we talked about at this point has been like location, people attitude the food and drinks we didn't talk about that food and drinks another one who's bringing food are you eating is food allowed at the table i'm not going to bother getting into that in detail but that's another thing you should be talking about a food whether you can eat who's going to bring food who pays for food all that fun stuff is something else you talk about I, I missed that on my list now board game event the one thing you know is going to be there besides gamers is games and honestly i think there's some pretty specific things you should talk about in particular for what games are going to be at your game night. Starting with what games? What 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 do you want to play? I, I, you got a group of six. Are we going to play six player games? Or are we going to play two, three player games? Are we always going to play a heavy game? Are we going to start the night with a filler, a, a, you know, an app, a pair, or no, an appetizer and sit and play something quick. Then we're going to play a, you know, heavier up to two hour game. And then we'll finish off with a one hour aperitif. And that's our, our four hour game session, let's make it a five hour game session just so there's room in between. Or are you going to sit and play the same game every week? You love Catan, your group loves Catan. We just want to play more Catan. You know what? Every month, maybe we'll add in a new rule, a new house rule, or we'll pick up an expansion, but we're going to play Catan every week. Or I only like 18xx games. 
but they take too long. We only have two hours, so we're going to play in Mo's basement. We've got the giant table, the magnetic table set up, and we're going to take our turns. The only thing we need to do is everyone must get in four turns every week. As long as it takes, you're getting in four turns before you go home. No, you can take turns during the week if you fall behind. You know, whatever it happens to be, what games are you playing? And you can, and it can be as simple as, hey, you know what? One of us is going to buy a new game every month. We're going to have a schedule. Someone buys a new game every month. And for that month, that's the game we play. Yeah. It can be, it can totally be, fair. you know, uh, it doesn't have to be this game and this game. And we've got a list here and these are the games. No, no, it can be, okay, we're going to go with the new game. We want to mm -hmm. play the new hotness. That's what we like. So when the new hotness shows up, that's what we're playing. Now, it can also be you get your game group like I did mine to say, hey, I review games. We're going to play things about five times each. And I'm also going to be playing with a couple other groups. But I'm going to show up some weeks and I'll be like, we're playing this because I need to play it. Other times I'm going to let you guys pick. Yes. <laughs> but that can be your agreement. Uh, next, who brings the games? Who Whose games? Are you playing with like I happen to have a big game collection? It's pretty easy. You play with my games when you're at my house generally. But you know what? Tori and Kat have shown up with games. Sean's come down with games. It happens now and then. Whose responsibility is it to provide the games? Uh, possibly more important to your group is whose responsibility is it to pay for the games and purchase them in the first place? Again, it doesn't have to be one person. There is nothing wrong with the group splitting on the cost of a game. I know I'm not trying to like hint at something here. We, we I, I take care of the games. That's fine. That doesn't have to change. But it may matter to other groups. Now, here's another thing that goes along with that. Who's teaching it? Because yes. it isn't always going to be the person who buys the game, who brings the game, yes. or who live, or who even lives there. It could be someone else who just happens to be really good at teaching either a game, that game, or games in general. Yes. We talked about this in, in, in various other episodes, but there is nothing wrong with uh, me buying a game, getting it shipped to Sean's house, and then Sean giving it to his son to learn, and then us all getting together and Sean's daughter teaching us like there's no reason you couldn't do it except for very far away and all that. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, there's no reason one person should be handle all that responsibility. Absolutely. All right. Here's one people don't think of and should be talked about when you're done playing. What happens at my house? Everyone at the table sits and helps us repack the game into the state it was in. When I go to my friend Jamie's house, you literally box dump into the lid. He'll take care of it because to him, that's fun. He enjoys repackaging his games. For him, that's lonely fun. The next day after game night is reorganizing everything the way he likes it. Totally fair. There's kind of two ends of the spectrum. Maybe you literally just box dump and put it on the shelf. I've met those gamers. They scare me, but I've met those gamers. <laughs> that's a thing. I, I once sat down to play Chaos in the Old World with someone who literally took the box and went like this and lifted it up and everything went bleh. And I'm like, oh my. Okay, then. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people, you know, there are people out there who have uh, whatever uh, conditions and need to have things in certain ways. Yes. That's great. Make sure everyone knows. Make yep. sure you know that you're, if you put things away in the wrong spot, this person is going to get upset by it. It's going to bother them. Or, you know, or it's going to bother them or something. You know, mm -hmm. make sure everyone knows that. Yep. Uh, what are you going to do to protect your games? Like if you're playing with your game group, do you make sure to always have sleeves? Do you have any rules about where your drinks are? Not on the game table, please. Do you eat food while you're playing? Do you eat greasy food? Are there limits? Do you allow chicken wings in the middle of the table? Do you put it right on the desert in Catan? Like, I did, it totally depends on your group. Chicken wings Is there and anything? Cheetos during your yes. deck building games. Exactly. Uh, but let's talk about this, right? Like, this is something that should be discussed. And then follow up to that is, what if something gets damaged? This is something a lot of groups don't talk about. And it has come up at a couple of our public play events. Um, personally, I'm pretty good with it with my friends. If something gets damaged, it's fine. Most of my games get played enough times. Any game that's played enough to get damaged, generally, I'll just I'll buy another copy if I want it. That, or I'll find some way around it. But maybe uh, you need something like, hey, if you, you break it, you bought it. Like. You you bend one of my cards in Terraforming Mars. You now have a shiny new copy of Terraforming Mars, and you can buy me a new copy when you get a chance. This one's now yours since you're the one that broke it, which I personally think is better than you buy me a new copy and I keep both. Personally, I find if someone damages, ruins one of my games, they get to have that copy, and I would expect a replacement, depending on who it is. And and again, session zero. This should be talked about. If if only one person's buying the games, it's really not fair to make them buy replacements if something gets damaged. Maybe damage becomes like insurance. 
where people, the group then gets together like, ooh, we ruined Moon's copy of Terraforming Mars at the game night. I mean, you know what? It's what, a $60 game? Let's all throw 10 bucks in. Let's get a new copy for the group. So and the next thing is, who owns it? Or where is it? Or or if, if a group owns it, because again, there's no reason only one person has to buy a game. Uh, where does it live when you're not playing it? Yeah. What, do you, does your group have a game library? Is it everyone bringing their own games? This one's very important to put in a session zero and possibly document in case someone leaves the group. Especially if it's someone who contributed to the games. What are you doing with that? Honestly, in my opinion, the understanding should be as the game stays with the group, however members are left. And I guess there's a last man standing when you get down to the last two people that are then the group breaks up and then you got to figure it out. But like, you should talk about this again. That's our entire point tonight is these are things you should talk about. These are things people don't realize they should talk about. All these should be talked about before they happen. So you at least have some way, know what's going to happen when a deal to again, setting expectations and then following up and following through. So next we've got a few topics that all kind of sort of flow together. Yeah. But are there games, ideas, uh, topics that you don't play that are, yep. will not get played at the table that you refuse to, you know, don't buy these guys. Don't bring them. We're not doing this. And again, that kind of goes to the lines and veils. It's the board game equivalent. No, I don't want anyone playing cards against humanity at my house. No, I don't allow it in any public play events. I play. Nor do I allow the spinoffs and the others. Any game that is set out to offend people or gives the excuse for people to be nasty by saying, ha, 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 it's a game. I don't want that at my game tables. Uh, Secret Hitler is another one where, yep. you know, that's a game that uh, should not be played in many places. Uh, in the chat room, D brings up colonization. That can be a very oh, touchy very topic. And there's popular. a lot of games that out there covering colonization um maybe maybe not playing those in public or if at all if, if you want to play with them at all game. you know if you want to play with that at home maybe that's fine but maybe it's not yes. um, and no we're talking about banning games but it's the opposite too like what's allowed if you are fine with playing a whole bunch of games about colonization and being the colonizers and exploiting diamond mines and having slaves if you're cool with that and your group's all on the same page it sounds bad to say cool with that if you're willing to acknowledge the problematic content in that and still play the games, that is your choice. That's up to your group. But again, you want everyone on the same page. Absolutely. Uh, that also goes for adult games. If you get into adult content, there's nothing wrong with consenting adults playing adult level games at home in the, pri in the privacy of their own homes. Uh, more power to you. Yep. But Again, that's something that is between consenting adults in the privacy of your own home. A public mm -hmm. play event is public. Yes. Not all persons there may be consenting. Very true. Uh, not to, not Every, to mention not adults. Everyone at the venue would have to be consenting. <laughs> right. you know, again, there must be consenting and adults, which again, yes. it's, if it's your FLGS, they may not all mm -hmm. be. Now, again, I mentioned this should all be talked about. You can document it. Um, we have entire episodes on forming a game club and having po hosting public play events. That's where you really want this stuff written down and you want somewhere uh, posted. It's the wrong word because most of these, like if you have a game store, post this stuff, right? Post your, your rules, have a binder, whatever. But if you're going to have a public play event, you really should have this stuff documented somewhere. Uh, know if it's using, if you're using like Facebook to organize events, it can just be on your Facebook page. It might be better to have it there in a binder or something. But you also don't want a new person to show up and be like, you have to read these 18 pages and sign this disclaimer before you play. So that's it's it's a little different there. Um, if you're running a con, that's also totally different. Um, the things you definitely want is a harassment policy. If you're doing public play, you want everyone to know who's in charge somehow, whether whether it's just, you know, hosted by somewhere or just the person in charge. Make sure to greet everyone who comes in, which you should be doing anyway. But everyone should know who's in charge and where to report problems, whether that's the person in charge or the venue or whatever it happens to be. Um, you also need someone to liaise with the venue. You might have a perfectly reasonable social contract, had a session zero, have your own rules, but it ends up, if you move those tables, the Teamsters are gonna be really damn upset that you move those tables and put two together. Liaise with the venue, find out. That's one of the most ones that like I couldn't believe was a thing, but makes perfect sense now that I know it's a thing. 
we had a problem with that at Origins where we moved some tables and got in a lot of trouble for it. And I never even thought to ask. Um, and you also got to watch for venue specific rules, whatever those may be. Whether it's, you know, it's a dry venue there. They still yep. exist. Uh, I've been to and I've, don't sneak some in under the table. Yeah, Look yes. what we did. Don't and that, that. Include, that includes bev- fruit and beverage rules. Uh, yes. Don't sneak in snacks if the venue has snacks and is, yes. is you know, they are there for purchase. And there are rules saying don't bring in outside snacks. Yes, if never bring in anything snacks. outside without asking. And and like my own personal rule technically is in the rule, but support the venue if you are playing in a public place buy something, spend some money, like they're giving you the space, expecting to make some income on this. Even your local game store, try to buy your games there, or at least buy your sleeves if you can't afford the games, or buy some dice, whatever. Buy a miniature now and then, support the store in some way. Absolutely. All right, you got anything else? Um, No, I think that about covers it. So that's it, I think, for our discussion on Session Zero for Board Gamers. Now, I hope you got something out of this conversation. If this has inspired you to do a session zero with your game group, we'd love to hear how it went. Let us know in the comments below. Uh, Let us know on social media, but but speak up. And uh, if you were able to speak up about the board, your session zero, speak up to us about how it went. Yeah, I would love to share some stories, actually, in our, our, our feedback session at the beginning of our podcast, talking about how this went for people. Now, remember, we are here to answer your gaming and game night questions. This question came from a fan of the show. And if you've got a question for us, like Emmett, head to tabletopbellhop.com. Click on Ask the Bellhop. Fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Or hit me up on social media where I can found pretty much everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. All right. Well, now that you've heard our thoughts on a board game night session zero, do any of the lobbyists have anything to add and yeah there's plenty in the chat thank you chat room Uh, a lot of stuff we kind of brought up a little bit but there i don't know if you want to go through all of these comments but there are some fantastic comments in there yeah so we will start off at the top here darkling blight said never thought much about it in the sense of board games yeah since we just tend to show up and pick a game but i can see it being a good step for a legacy game campaign Mm -hmm. to figure out if this is going to even work or if they want to back out in advance. That's a yes. big thing. Commitment. Uh, you know, if if everyone seems, you know, is is there all the time, but you know, oh, you know what? We're actually thinking about doing a, a big vacation with the family in mm-hmm. November this year because we've got some time and it's working out. So that would be like an entire month off of our game. Yeah. Do we want to do that? Or do you guys want to go ahead and play through so that you're done by Christmas and, and not, you know our way through yeah the big you know legacy games uh have have a whole other sort of yeah, uh, aspect campaign games of uh of that session zero and re- you really want to do is have that conversation before anyone bought the game if you can because I, I gotta say i've seen a lot of people talk about how their copy of gloomhaven still gathering dust because they can't the regular group's not up for it or whatever the case may be yep and uh, i've got to say this is the reason we're having this episode tonight in my opinion we brought it up a couple times, but people just don't think this is required for board games. Amen. And I don't think people realize the problems that can come up. And I think most of us do. Like when you sit back and look at the various game groups, as long as you're not brand new to the hobby, I'm sure you know game nights that went south and why they went south and groups that broke up. And we probably could have mentioned the whole intergroup dating thing. I wasn't even thinking about that because like we're old and married now. And it's not it's not the issue that it used to be in our, our teen years where there was definitely intergroup dating and where that all went to. That's all stuff should be talked about. I, and I got to say with young teen love, you probably can't say you're not allowed to date other members in the group, but it's the kind of thing you want to talk about. And like uh, the example of the player who goes gung ho on all their games and tries to ruin it. I've experienced that many times, just as much as the hardcore player that wants to take everything seriously. And I've had different game groups over the years. I do not play with the same people I played with in high school or university or like probably about every 10 year group it's a different group of people i game with some people are consistent through it but some aren't yep uh we did discuss darkling's second comment there um we talked so, about so one of the things to talk about there he's noting that that you tends to play with a group that are all on the same wavelength for acceptable content 
Now, the thing is, you should still talk about it. Maybe you talk about it and go, yep, 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 that's what we've been doing. Yep, yeah, got it. Yeah, I always assume that. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the unwritten rule. Yeah, yeah, we know. That's fine. If that's your session zero, make sure everyone's on the same page. That's all. Me, you think you're all on the same wavelength until someone puts a spider mini on the table, right? Like that, that's the, the, the whole thing is you don't want surprises. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so we've got uh, a little more talk about Ghost Betwix. Uh, things like transportation uh, are really are a big thing when we were talking about yeah. the where you're gaming. You know, hey, look, yes. I can go, I can game when it's at Mary's and Bob's and Jane's. But if it's at Kim's, they're not on a bus route. And it's like a yeah. 25 minute walk to the bus stop. And I'm like, I, that's not worth it for me. OK, good to know. Let's let's plan mm-hmm. around that. Let's let's make sure we schedule. Here's an important thing that ties into how long is your game night? For many the sessions, buses still running. Yes. For many sessions, we would get to 1045 at night and we're in the middle of something. This happened to be a role playing group, but it still applies. And we're there we're in the middle of something. It's like. All right, guys, I got to go right now unless someone can give me a ride home because the bus has stopped running. The last bus comes by in 10 minutes. And I'll admit most of the time I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll give you a ride. It's good, but it's something to consider. Yeah, when, when do the buses stop running? And again, cost. Uh, there is nothing wrong with your game group splitting the cost for the Uber so that your friend gets to actually play. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, uh, banning cards against humanity is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, again, to each their own if you want to play at it. Public play. Uh, they, at public, public play. At public play yes. events. Absolutely. Now, I will admit the latest printings, they did fix a lot of the problematic content. Um, But still, I. I and I, sure I get that page. as a company, they have done some fun things and some. They've also some done nice some horrible things. things. Yeah, they've also done some horrible things. And <laughs> the fact of the matter is that there are better versions of, you know, apples to apples. Um, just you know, play apples to apples, and then you can choose where you want right. where you want your play nitwit. Yeah, you know. <laughs> right. Play no, Ven doesn't really. No, no Ven doesn't. That doesn't um, work. Nitwit has many drawing games. Yep. Uh, yeah, you don't hear as much about Cards Against Humanity right now. Yeah, again, Deanna's saying that you shouldn't walk out in the tournament. You shouldn't, but well, you should only walk out if it's if there's a, like if the if the reason to walk out is important. It shouldn't be you walk out because you're losing the game. It shouldn't be you walk out because you're pissed off someone took your spot in a worker placement game. It should be you walk out because your heart just started racing because something happened in the game you weren't expecting and you're starting to have a panic attack. In that case, walk out. I don't care if it's a tournament. Yep. And and I I don't know how to word that better. (laughs) I'm failing at English here, but I think people understand that. Yeah, no, there's, it's it's tough. And then there are other things where, again, in a public tournament, uh, maybe walking out isn't the solution. Maybe going to the organizer is the correct solution. Walk away right. from the game, but don't necessarily leave. Um, yes, I, hey, I would. But again, if you're in the middle of a panic attack and you got to go, you got to go. Like, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I think in, in general, tournaments, that's, you know, again, well, tournaments should have not. to have their own session zero. It has yes. to be, you know, Going into a oh, tournament, ten- tournaments technically have session zeros usually. Yeah, and the, some of it's just verbal. It's online. It's uh, here's our rules. Here's our harassment policy. Here's here's what we expect of you if you sign up for this tournament. Right. Usually, it's a multi-page document. Yeah, a contract is essentially a a a distributed session zero. You're not at all sitting yeah. around discussing it. You're agreeing to the contract or not. It's it's yes. a sort of a binary <laughs> session zero. Uh, anyone else got anything? Uh, looks, I think we covered everything. Out of bounds discussion sure. topics. I'm not sure what that was in referred to, but I, again, what 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 should you be talking about? Oh, I think it's only, okay. I don't know if this is what Dave means, but this is something else we should talk about. Is what out of game things are allowed? What where we're like? Hey, I have done it. I want to talk about work, guys. We're here to play, right? Or you know what? My pet just died. Can we make sure none of this happened? Let's let's not talk about our pets tonight. Whatever. Or just, you know what? I want to focus on no the spoilers. game. Or, yeah, no spoilers. <laughs> talk about spoilers. Or the opposite. Hey, you know what? We're going to play some late games tonight. Everyone's welcome to talk about whatever they want. Be distracting. You know, go talk about whatever. Heck, maybe at your table, that's you're going to spend half an hour just chatting about stuff. How casual is your game night and how much chatting are you going to be? Uh, like, and, play and- you know, there can be something as, you know, again, I, I mentioned earlier the whole, you know, atheist versus, you know, maybe no one talks about religion. Maybe yeah. you decide, okay, look, 
folks yeah, age sex politics. politics is off the table we do not yes. discuss politics here we've yep. got great people we know who are both red and blue we leave that at the door and we play the games that's the rule and you know fine um yep. maybe you don't want to put that rule down and you just like chaos that's fine too <laughs> just Perfect. be aware what you're getting into do, do re- again the important thing to remember is you're all gathering together to have a good time to play a game and set those expectations yeah it's all about the expectations most you people know who have the red and blue guys are going to be sitting at the table everyone needs to know whether or not it's going to turn into a knife fight yeah. or not <laughs> and what to do if it does that's yeah. all the should talk about ahead of time i say you give them you know <laughs> a civil war game to play or something and make it really <laughs> interesting like you might as well just lead into that um there's an interesting election game i heard about recently <laughs> there you go <laughs> you play some revolution of 18 whatever is 28 1828 uh, something like that i can never remember the name of that game uh <laughs> oh there's there's lots actually there there's making of a president and so on right so yeah if you if you all uh, have to be blue state folk, yeah if you so all have any blue, blue state people and you know you're all generally fans of the same general leanings. Great. More power to you. Link, bring, bring the politics on. Yeah, uh, if that's what you enjoy. I, and if, honestly, if, if you're into that, there are games that cater to those conversations, and I would probably lean my group towards it. If, if you have a group that's into politics, all the power to you. That's, I, I have friends like that. Yeah. That's not the kind of night I'm interested in playing in, but hey. All the yeah, I was actually, you. I actually, uh, it fell apart, but I had actually been deliberately uh, joining a podcast at one point that we tried to get off the ground that was literally a red, a blue, and a Canadian all mm. talking about mainstream politics. Um, that was, go. that was it. That was our ideas. Uh, that was, that was our concept. And unfortunately, our schedules were just weren't working out and uh, it never actually made it to air. But I was looking forward to that personally. Dave specifically said, my green boot politics talk friendly, but that's because I screened them out. See, screening them out, that right there is your session yeah. zero. You, you that, had a that's session That's exactly zero. what we're talking about. You just didn't <laughs> call it that. And I do think a lot of groups do it. And then you do it informally without trying. Like, that's how you formed your friend group and how your game group formed. And I'm sure your game group probably went through some iterations before it gained the group it is now. And some of that was part of this. It's just the main thing we're trying to do is, is give you other ideas of things to talk about. Again, set expectations. Yeah. Everyone should be on the same page. There shouldn't be surprises. And when there are surprises, you should know how you're going to deal with them. I think that pretty much sums it up. Absolutely. So go out there, get together, talk about games and play some games and have more fun than you ever had before because you know why everyone's there and everyone's problem issues and everyone's joys and sit down that's it hey wait one final point talk about the happy stuff too what types of games do you like not what do you want want to play what do you want to play what's your favorite kind of game what games bring you joy what are your favorite moments and board games and how can we make them happen more often that should also be part of all this i i just realized we had a very negative bent to this on avoid this try to stop this no like it's it's both sides of the coin Absolutely. Well, again, it's it's avoiding things so that everyone has the best time they can. Yes, is a lot of what is is generally what your session zero is about. It's yes. about finding out the bad so that you can never touch touch on it again. And mm-hmm. the only thing left is, is the, the good. good. It's it's a it's a sculpting of your group. It's a, you know, let's go. Let's talk chiseled again. <laughs> You're sculpting chiseled. away all You're of the too- bad and 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 left so that what's left is a core of everyone understanding. Yes. what's going to make it a great night. Over and over and over again. Yep. And in the end, you should have a group with two arms, five torsos, and nine heads. Once you have a nine-headed group, you know you're doing great.